Okay, hi, thanks uh, everybody for being here. And uh, well, I'm Azlis. Uh, Agam is my real name. I also do other stuff besides this. And this is just sort of a hobby and things I got involved in over the last year, see how far I could take it. I think I've sort of uh, well, covered the basics and uh, made some new stuff for you. And so this is how we, this is our example program. I've put all this stuff in this package for you if you want to follow along. Uh, also, also be on the last slide if you want to play with it later at home. So this is our little binary, and uh, the idea is that you can normally not read the function show password. Um, this is basically an example of how to make binary. This, this will output an elf binary on Linux, and we're going to investigate some tools on how to debug it, and uh, see what else we can do to make it harder later on. And the idea is that um, this, the flag hexor is set to zero, and you can never reach it from the normal program execution, but if you use a debugger, you can somehow ma make it to show password. The idea is from now on that we will not have the source code, so we can see using some tools uh, what's going on, this debugging. Um, <coughs> this is what uh, is output. Structurally, an elf has a header that describes the, the addresses within the file of the program header table, which describes the segments that follow, uh, the text segment, data segment, and uh, read-only data segment. Text segment is in this, this case in code, and then we have uh, data that is uh, mapped on the stack or heap. And uh, the section header table refers to these segments and names them as sections. This gives you the very information the names of uh, what is a function, and they also have a strings table to tell you what uh, their name is, and you can see uh, more about the program than you would. But the second header table is optional, and you can strip it, as was explained by the last speaker. Here's what we can see from the output if we don't, uh, yeah, by statically examining the output, we can see the strings, and we can also see, already see the encrypted uh, string uh, below the format string, and now I can run the tracing on the data box. And uh, we can also see the, the function that gets called memfrog. And from here, we can all already get a good idea of what's going on in the binary and what we have to debug in it. Another thing, another tool we can use uh, is LDD to see uh, which dynamically linked libraries the program is linked against. Um, in this case, we have only libc, the other ones are special. Uh, we have VDSO, which is used uh, to virtualize system calls in the Linux kernel. This actually lives in the kernel. And we have the Linux LD, uh, .so, the dynamic linker, which uh, will load in other dynamic libraries from the binary. And on Linux is actually the interpreter, similar to a script interpreter like Python or Bash, that is uh, used to run the ELF binary uh, on Linux. <coughs> now here we have uh, read-elf. This is the, the common tool to uh, see the layout of the uh, schematic that I showed you earlier. It will show you all the information about the different sections, headers, all the different sections, um, what their names are, how they are mapped into memory, and really, ELF is all about how a program is mapped into memory before execution continues. <clears throat> and then we have object dump, which will also let us see the whole assembly with all the different information in its presence. And we can use it as a debt listing to reverse engineer the binary and crack it. And the most getaway way to do that on Linux is using XDD, uh, XXD, sorry. You can just uh, edit uh, the binary in bin, load, run uh, XSD over all the lines, and it will uh, produce an assembly listing. Then we can edit, uh, hex edit the binary by hand, and then reverse the pro process with XSD R. And then we'll have uh, hex edit the binary as we wish. This is uh, a <coughs> really general, but people can use it to um, debug our binary and make a, a crack one that will work for them. Then we have strace. This will do all the uh, log all the system calls that the binary makes internally, and all the libraries uh, also make system calls because the only way to really interfer interface with the kernel is to do to make system calls, and this is what uh, makes everything work. This is a lot of output, but very detailed. You can see exactly what happens at the start of a binary, um, how it's mapped into memory first. The then our linker gets uh, loaded, then the binary itself, which starts with uh, elf. So x7f and then elf, and then the rest of the binary is read into string, and the, the required areas are mapped into memory, the stack, the heap, and uh, then at uh, some point the actual entry point is reached, and we start with write. It's basically like a hello world program. 
And then it gets killed because we don't have the hex or flag set yet. Mm -hmm. and, and a more high level view we can have uh, with Ltrace, which shows all the library calls. And in this example, it only uses libc and only one function from it. But we can see in quite clear detail what is called from libc. And this is more useful to quickly analyze what's going on in a bigger program. <coughs> The mother of all debuggers, as mentioned before, is GDB on Linux. On Linux is the mother of all. <laughs> it's not really an awesome debugger, but it works fine. And uh, as you can see, it's only four steps to win at our example program. If you've never done this, I really recommend you play around with my example program, easy.c, and do this. You can see how powerful it feels to actually control in the process in memory. <coughs> um, then there's also the progress fence. Uh, it was also shown before uh, using the maps. And we can get a lot of information, ex including the original EXE and the file descriptors. This is how it would look. Uh, these are actually, the F XE is actually sending to the original binary that's used. And the maps show the memory regions as they are mapped into memory. This can also provide you information for reverse engineering, debugging, and uh, apparently runtime binary injection. <laughs> and now we get to the fun part. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm kind of hurrying along. Is there any questions so far? Uh, or is there anything like here that you, uh, you'd like to get into more, more detail into? This is all clear. Uh, this is basically how we work with binaries on Linux. <coughs> so the fun stuff is uh, what we can use in GCC to produce code that's harder to read. And the map page is actually helpful uh, enough to inform us what uh, flags in GCC make code. Uh, Hard to debug. If you uh, look at the web page and search for uh, debugging impossible, you'll find some of these features. <laughs> uh, the most common one is static. It uh, takes all the library calls and puts them in the binary itself, so you don't need the libraries on the system anymore. And uh, this will produce a bigger binary and has a lot of code that's not really relevant to your program, so it becomes more of a needle in a haystack challenge. Uh, omitting the frame pointer will remove the information that. Uh, <coughs> the GDB can use to see in what uh, stack frame you're in. So the, the call stack uh, becomes a bit more hard to reconstruct in your map, in your mind, and uh, in the program itself, of course. And unrolling loops is uh, not actually an optimization here, but we can use it to, because it, because it implies fweb and frename registers, and these also obscure the code output, they make it. Uh, less structured, but it still works because the, the, the binary itself doesn't really care about uh, debugging information and keeping the memory neatly organized. And, or renaming registers doesn't matter to the binary. It would matter a lot to us if suddenly the purpose of uh, registers is completely uh, non-conventional. Non so we'll look at the map page for more about what the stuff does. And then we have stripping, which will remove the debug output. As you can see, the number of section headers that are created and the number of strings in the binary goes down if we use strip. And there's also s strip, which removes a bit more, and then we are left pretty much without anything to debug the binary with. This is what uh, the GDB map, GCC map, map page means with debugging impossible. But why stop here? Uh, it is sort of the, the default and the standard to have a statically linked binary and strip it, then pre pretty much nobody will want to touch it unless they have access to tools like X-Rays or IDA Pro. But those cost a lot of money and are not open source. They are sometimes free. <laughs> not really the case. Yeah, that's not really the way we want to play this game. We can do a bit better than just stripping. I think that having no uh, bad information is better for, from our point of view than having no information. We have more information to confuse the reverse engineer with. So I have this program called troll.c. And uh, <coughs> what it does is it basically trollfuscates the ELF structure, <laughs> a technical term coined by my friend. And um, it's, it changes few fields in the, uh, the header and it overwrites a few choice, choice sections in the binary with junk. And it will strip the section header, overwrite the section header table itself, so you can't even find it in memory. The punchline in this one is that <laughs> there are no program headers in this file. This can't be right because program headers are essential; they have to be in the file. Uh, somehow, readout gets confused, and we mess up its day. 
So a very this this adds the static uh, part of anti debugging, the compile options, and now we get to more dynamic stuff. Traditionally, it's uh, packing or encrypting your uh, memory image. This is very popular on Windows, but not so much uh, not so common on Linux. There's one uh, tool that's very common, UPX, but it's not really hard to crack. So this is more of a conceptual idea of what what we want to do, and I've made a very ghetto example here that you can inline into your C code, include it. Um, what this does, uh, has a little dummy stub. The idea is that uh, this stub, the entire stub, will be included at the top of the binary, and it will look uh, right to the end to libcsu in it, which uh, hopefully will be right after main. So between this dummy and libcsu in it, all the, the text section code uh, that is present in the binary and created by the user will be uh, decrypted using memprop instruction uh, system, system shit. the memprop uh, library call again. Uh, before and after the memory page has to be protected to be written to using mprotect and later on the write capability has to be removed again. And this has the following output. This is not really what we want as a reverser. It's very hard to make anything of this because it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> and actually, these are not valid instructions. That's where they're uh, annotated as bad. So good start for little work. <laughs> and another simple thing we can do as a C programmer is to make our process non-dumpable, uh, prevent it from ever dumping a core. This would be useful information for to reverse it because we can have access to all the map memory and see what's going on there. Also, the text segment will be plainly visible and can be loaded into the debugger or analyzed by itself. It's easy, a good start. And a very common trick that is uh, actually pretty old school is to p-trace ourselves. Uh, it was also already introduced what p-trace is, but the kernel has a limitation that you can only have uh, a process be p-trace once. So if you p-trace ourselves and it comes back negative, then there's a good chance that we're being debugged by p-trace. This used to be like one call, but since, p since Ubuntu introduced the p-trace scope, we have to uh, define which process is going to p-trace us and then uh, call the p-trace. So we spawn a child here and we let the uh, child trace us. Just before we started, we set ourselves to uh, be dumpable and identify the p-tracer process. Then uh, we let it run and after it's done, we check the return status and we set ourselves non, non dumpable just before. <coughs> and this is pretty effective, but what happens here? We can preload uh, a C library function and make it make ptrace return zero always, and then this entire protection is defeated. It's very useful to override C function in this way for for debugging or anti debugging, and um, or add anti anti debugging. In fact, so this is the anti anti ptrace trick. <laughs> but um, yeah, we don't want people to, to do this, so we can check the environment variables uh, through the end v pointer. This is uh, what comes after the uh, main uh, count, arc arcc count and uh, arcv arguments. And to the audience that paying attention, why are we not using getenv and strucco? You could do the same thing. Exactly, right. You can do the exact same thing and I'll write what it's doing. So we have to do it by hand in C. Uh, and this will basically work. And a really silly trick that seems to be pretty much unknown is that we can hide from PROCFS and hide all this nice output and we can hide from all the system uh, process monitoring utilities that people rely on. <laughs> they rely on it way too much in fact because we can just migrate our process several times a second, uh, change our PID and change our process name and it will be <laughs> exceedingly hard to actually debug this. And, Good luck. Uh, yeah. Very good luck. In fact, I myself have not been able to find a way to debug this properly. Uh, this skill that you see here is uh, meant to confuse S-trace because it will somehow assume that your binary has crashed. Which is pretty logical, but we can ignore this, the zigzag fault signal. So this is a good way to annoy uh, things that try to debug it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm actually pretty scared by this. Please don't use, use this for anything unethical. 
So um, with our tools, we profit. This is the output of many of the, the things I showed you, a few more. And our P-trace thing, uh, and the LD nth checker is in series, which will not run if you have any LD uh, preloads, uh, environment variables, and it will not run in GDP. And all the other tools will not really understand that this is actually an L file. And even some crashes were, con were uh, unearthed <coughs> in Unstripped, which, uh, which attempts to put back the, the missing debug information in the strip binary, and read off, which we, should, we already covered. Uh, unfortunately, their uh, invalid reads are not really useful, but still entertaining. And uh, Ida is even confused. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this happens after six pop ups, but no go. <laughs> yeah, take nice. a picture. <laughs> Um, and how do, go, how do we go on from here? We can use, uh, we have to go into the kernel, because PokerFS is useless, and all these, uh, these library calls to C can be hidden, we can statically link it, and we can strip it, and we can obfuscate the code. We have to go a level higher or deeper, depending on your view, and see what's going on from a, a more concrete perspective. And system type is an interface to do just that. It allows you to instrument the kernel without writing actual kernel modules. And it's very pretty simple scripting language and not as likely to actually uh, have any negative effects, but you st still can crash your kernel. And this is a simple example to show you sort of how the language looks like and what it can do. This would be, I guess, the way to continue on with the ProcFS maliciousness. Uh, what I'd like to have covered, or what we should uh, probably cover next time, is how to write a better packer. Uh, there's a lot of information about this in the Windows world. Uh, how we can create fake disassembly by jumping in between instructions and hoping that the dis disassembler will see it as a legitimate jump and try to disassemble from there. When it will be misaligned, then uh, it will be appear as junk or assembly that does something else that we are actually doing. We can exploit code case in the binary, so if we have a large section of uh, non-operational instructions, or no op, or we have uh, code that has never reached in a normal run, we can put our code in between there. Uh, we can spread out payloads in uh, little segments, and we can jump from one to another, uh, back and forth, and hopefully we can confuse Ida to not show this graph, or have a circular graph, something that's hard to debug, even if it's more still. We can use nanobytes, which uh, are a way of replacing every branch instruction with an uh, interrupt call, which then is handled by an interrupt call, a table to look up, which uh, then continues on from there. So for every mm -hmm. branch instruction, we have an interrupt. This uh, triggers the jump from the interrupt handler through its lookup table to the actual branch that is uh, called. This also makes it fun harder because the interrupt is also used for debugging itself. And we can virtualize our code by um, inventing our own uh, instruction sets, or we can perhaps build something on LLVM. <coughs> this is an area for more research later. And that's all I have. So let's wrap it up.